Listening to militarychatradio.com. And good afternoon. This is the Al Young Show, and uh, welcome to another Tuesday. Today, uh, I'd just like to talk to um, the audience about people who make it in the military and who actually enlisted people who make it to the highest rank that we enlisted people really make it to. And uh, that's uh, Sergeant Major. Uh, I'd just like to uh, hit on it briefly for a few minutes. And one of my good friends, uh, someone I have known for quite a few years now, uh, made the E-9 list, and I was so happy because uh, she gets into that group that so many of us strive for and so few of us really make it. So I'd like to say right now uh, congratulations to um, Sergeant Major to be one day, uh, Andrea uh, Hopkins, and uh, for those of you who were stationed in New York who knew her as Andrea Nelson, it's Andrea Nelson Hopkins, and uh, she made the list, and this person is just a, a really wonderful person. She's been a personal friend of mine for many years, and I've always known her to be a great person, and uh, she's the type of person that If you ever really needed her, she was right there for you. Uh, She did a lot for a lot of people. And um, I always just thought if anybody was going to make anything, she would be one of those people who would do it. And I'm just so happy to uh, see that uh, she's making it. She's a a hardworking person. Uh, She's the type of person who the military always kind of look for, you know, because she's pursued her education. Uh, She's done all the things that they want you to do. Um, You know, uh, we're in that time frame where no longer is that wind me up soldier the viable individual that they're looking for. They're looking for people who's going to pursue education, who's going to meet the goals that the military is looking for. You know, um, each little uh, point in your life, you're supposed to be at a certain level. And if you don't meet those levels, then you don't get to where you're supposed to be. And apparently, uh, the military looked at her uh, files and found out that she's there. And, you know, um, throughout my military uh, career, I run into some people who I just thought were, uh, like, really role models of... And, you know, when we run into them uh, for one reason or another, sometimes um, we don't get a chance to either tell them or we don't want to tell them, hey, you were a great leader, or, you know, (laughs) we just say to ourselves, ah, the heck with you. But while I'm congratulating her, I'd like to probably go back right now and uh, tell uh, a few people or at least let them know if they ever get a chance to uh, review this, um, how I thought about them. Because there are some people out there who really need to be congratulated on the jobs that they did, even though these were those scary people. And when I say scary people, a lot of them were first sergeants, and then some of them later on made sergeant major, and uh, they attained that final goal. And I think one of the guys that uh, I guess I had the pleasure of working with, and sometimes it wasn't always a pleasure because, you know, uh, as a, um, I, he was actually my first sergeant when I was a recruiter in uh, Manhattan, and everybody used to just kind of like go, oh, God, here he comes. And uh, if you've ever been a recruiter 
And, you know, they mention the fact that the first sergeants come in, everybody goes crazy. Because uh, then you know they're going to look at, uh, at the time I was a recruiter, it was, he was going to look through all your cards and he's going to look through everything. And I'm sure these days, I don't know if they go through your computer or whatever, but, you know, they always keep track of um, what you're doing. And I'm sure right now they probably do the same thing. But uh, one guy that I thought was a uh, really role model as far as being a soldier was concerned, uh, he was a hardcore kind of an older soldier. And when I call him an older soldier, he was, I mean, everything had to be dressed right dress. And as long as you did your job, uh, you know, you had no problem with him. You know, that's all he was looking for. He wanted to make sure that you did everything. You know, as long as you did everything right and you're putting people in the military, he was, your, you know, he was your buddy. But if you weren't doing it right, then, you know, you were going to have problems with him. And that's all he wanted. Do your job. Do what's expected of you. Have everything the way it's supposed to be. And I think that's the whole thing in the military. That's how the military functions. You know, you have a job. People expect you to do it. And that's what they want. And I think when we look at our jobs and what we do, people expect you to do what you're supposed to do. And a lot of us get kind of annoyed when uh, we say, well, listen, I think you're looking for more than uh, we want to do. Well, no, whatever your job is, you got to do it. And as we get uh, higher in rank, that's exactly what starts happening. Uh, we just, you know, um, our expectations of what people want from us a lot of times a little bit uh, higher. And we look at it and say, well, gee, they want it right now. Well, unfortunately, as you get higher in rank, that's what starts happening. Everybody wants everything right now. But, uh, you know, you have to do it. So uh, the person I'm talking about, <laughs> and a lot of guys, if they uh, remember him, they'll kind of start smiling because they know that this guy was something else. But I have to tell you, this man was a person who I always respected. Uh, I always thought he was a funny guy. I mean, you know, he used to make me laugh because, you know, he walked around and... Uh, he was funny, I mean, but he was really a guy who, I think a lot of people misunderstood a thing about him. He just wanted you to do your job. And after you did your job and everything was okay, he was just really down to earth. I mean, it was kind of like from whatever time to whatever time, do what you're supposed to do and everything is good. Hey, this, man, we, we can sit down and talk and have a good time. But people didn't want to do that. A lot of people just said, ah, well, I, I'm just going to take my time. I'm going to do what I must, uh, whatever I want to do, and he wasn't going to accept that. And the person I'm talking about is uh, Sergeant Major uh, Arnold Fripp. I thought Arnold Fripp uh, was one of the uh, best examples of somebody who, uh, if I ever had to go in battle, which I was always saying, please don't let me do that one because uh, for those guys who love that type of thing, then uh, he would be one of the few people in life that I would follow. I mean, uh, where you say, well, this is one guy I would follow in battle, he would probably be one of the only people that I could really think about that I would want to follow in battle because I know that uh, he's the type of person that he would take care of you. Uh, whenever it came down to it, he would be the person who really uh, knew what he was doing. If he said, uh, it's going to rain, you could just about bet on it, it was going to rain. He was a really good leader and a really great person, and uh, I always respected him. So <clears throat> if I never got a chance to tell him, Arnold Fripp, uh, Sergeant Major, you were a great guy, and I think uh, as a leader, you did a fantastic job. And I always did respect you, and I want to let you know wherever you are, hey, you did a fantastic job. And there were a lot of us who did respect, uh, ex you know, ex uh, respected you. And, um, you know, a lot of guys were afraid because uh, as a first sergeant, um, you commanded uh, all first sergeants. 
you know, everybody thinks of a first sergeant. You're just like a principal at school. You know, here comes the principal. Everybody runs. Uh, you know, the commanding general comes to um, your company. Everybody, oh, my God, you know, they go crazy. I mean, all the crazy things that you do in the military, uh, the, the general is coming, and, uh, you know, all of a sudden, um, you know, he's not going to go in a, a, a latrine, but they have your spit shine it. Um, but it's just that kind of thing. And uh, I used to just, uh, like I say, laugh. And a, uh, another person who uh, I thought was a great person, uh, I knew her also uh, before she made Sergeant Major, and she later took over um, uh, Manhattan, uh, I mean the uh, New York Recruiting Battalion, and that was uh, Sergeant Major Minerva Ramos, another great uh, Sergeant Major. Um, and uh, she was a friend before she became Sergeant Major. Uh, I knew her when she was at East 7. She worked in the Bronx uh, as a recruiter. She was one of the top recruiters there. And she was a really great person. And I think everybody else uh, in uh, Manhattan uh, knew about her. And then when she became the Sergeant Major, um, she was a great uh, person, and uh, I think she became uh, kind of a legend throughout uh, USAREC also. So now that was another really wonderful person. And the whole time uh, <clears throat> that I can remember, I've run into some really great people who have made it, and uh, they were just really wonderful. Um, you run into these kind of individuals, and you say, uh, if the person who's going to make Sergeant Major is anything like some of the ones that you have known that you know are really good, who were people, pe uh, a person, uh, she's going to do a good job. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, Master Sergeant Nelson is going to, I mean, um, Master Sergeant Hopkins is going to do a really good job. And she will, because she's a people person. She's someone who listens. Uh, she's someone who... Uh, will always be there to take care of people, and she's just a wonderful person. So she's uh, going to be in great company. And there's some really great sergeant majors out there in all the services. I mean, you just don't get a chance to meet them all because, uh, you know, if you're in one particular service. But that, that community and that uh, particular group of folks, uh, like I say, it's the cream of the crop because, you know, uh, you've reached the pinnacle uh, of your careers. So, uh, again, congratulations. Um, I think in my whole uh, military experience, I've run into some, like I say, some really great people. I've worked with some, and, uh, you know, um, these are people I've kept in touch with, and y you, you never get a chance to kind of... Um, meet a lot of them again because in the military we go so many different ways and you think uh, god i'll never see them uh i've worked with guys that uh we, we became really good friends uh peter mclaughlin is uh one of the guys i work with he became a very good friend of mine i understand he made e8 and i think it's the last time i heard him uh johnny frambo is a made E8, and he's a good friend of mine, and uh, he became a pastor, and he now lives here in Florida, and we see each other every every once in a while. Um, Randy Fogel is another person that lives here in Florida. We were all together in New York. Um, Colonel, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Linda Kolar, uh, she was... Um, my uh, executive in uh, New York also, and um, uh, she uh, is now in Louisiana, and we keep in touch, and she's a wonderful person. Uh, Cassie Smith from one of my old units, uh, that's another person that I keep in touch with. Uh, these are people that you work with, and, you know, um, you, you, um, they're just great people. Uh, Michael... Um, Michael Brown uh, became a state trooper, and uh, he was a uh, E7, and he's still around. Earl Jackson was a uh, police officer. He's still in touch, and um, 
I kept in touch with uh, what Sandy Rivera, though we had very limited uh, contact. She became a warrant officer. I think the last time I saw um, uh, warrant officer Rivera, she was what uh, an E6 or an E5. And you know, this is going back to what around uh, 2000. Uh, you run into people, you uh, meet people, and they kind of like disappear out of your life, and you say, oh my gosh, what happened to them? Um, and it's just kind of funny. Uh, you always want to be able to stay in contact and, you know, uh, say hello to them. And, you know, now uh, when I'm on Facebook, I, I see them. Uh, before, uh, I didn't do a, a lot with Facebook. Uh, now I just kind of go on it here and there, but now I'm trying to get onto it a lot more. So you're running into a lot of people. Uh, and it's so nice to uh, run into one of them. And um, uh, one of my other good friends was um, Gene Jock, Jean Giles. Um, and I haven't uh, seen him in a very long time. He was also in uh, the reserve unit that I was in, and uh, he's uh, a very nice guy. Um, another person who guided me uh, when I first got into recruiting, and I have not seen this guy in many, many years, but a great guy, a great leader, uh, a person who, uh, when you're young and you're coming into uh, things that they teach you a whole lot was uh, James Charity. Uh, he was a station commander. He helped me out through a whole lot. And, uh, you know, I, I thought that was wonderful of him. And um, these are just people that you run into that they make a, uh, a, 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 an impact on you and uh, you really uh, appreciate everything that they do for you. You know, so we as military, we, we're from one place to another, and we run into all of these people, and uh, it's just something else. I recently was able to uh, go out, and uh, one of my friends that became one of my best friends, uh, we met uh, in Miami, uh, I hadn't seen him uh, since I left New York. Uh, Hugh McPhail, he had made a, a E8, and uh, but we got a chance to spend uh, the day together, and that was great. Uh, this is a guy who was my station commander when I was a recruiter, and uh, we had a, a wonderful time. I mean, this was really great. Uh, I had such a ball with this guy. Uh, even when I came back uh, from New York um, and I got here and I was able to join the DAV, I ran into uh, Ruben Perez, another station commander of mine in New York who lives right here in uh, Riverview where I moved to. He was the uh, commander at um, the DAV chapter and he got me into the DAV here in uh, Florida and um, that's where I've been ever since. But I never thought I would have met him, and I met him at uh, McDill Air Force Base. So we run into people, and all of these things happen. So, you know, you just meet people, you run into them, things happen, you hear about the things that are going on with them, uh, and then uh, you find out that great things are still happening to them, and you're so happy for them because they are a part of your little uh, inner circle. And, you know, anytime anyone gets promoted, um, you should always be happy for them because they've worked very hard for it. Even if they get promoted and you <laughs> are on this, you know, you're trying to get promoted and they get promoted and they get promoted before you, you should still be happy for them because apparently they worked just as hard or what have you, but the promotion system is very complicated and it's, and it's really hard to do. So if they beat you out, you know, the only thing you can do is say, well, listen, congratulations, and you know, you know they're blessed, and you'll get yours eventually. So um, just always be grateful that someone you know got there because your turn is coming, and, you know, you can't be 
upset or anything because uh, it happens. And I mean, sometimes only a few people get promoted out of thousands. And um, we just say, well, why was it them and not us? Well, why do people become millionaires, you know, and uh, other people are paupers? You know, some people are just fortunate, and we can't curse them for it. We can only uh, be grateful that uh, we're at least alive. Well, so much for that. I don't know if some of you have seen in the uh, news recently, at least here in Florida, this affects the people here in Florida. Um, again, they're talking about, and I'm sure this is not the first time that this has happened, um, of having budget cuts, and uh, I see MacDill is in the uh, news, and they're thinking about somewhere in the near future or down the line of talking about maybe MacDill might be on the chopping block. And I know this is, again, not the first time this has happened. And you ask yourself, you know, um, when does this kind of thing ever really stop? You know, guys and girls, we get out there and we give it all that we can, and I don't care what you do, there's always something coming down to slash your quality of life. Or at least you're put on alert that it might be. And you always have to fear, well, what do I do? How do I change it? Uh, why is it always I got to worry about, well, if they close McDill, what would I do? How will it affect my life? Well, for a lot of us, it would be pretty devastating. Just think about it. That would have a, oh, enormous effect on a lot, a lot, a lot of people. And I mean a lot. You know, um, McDill is <laughs> the closest military base for um, miles for anyone to get any major care, for so many things to happen. And then when you think about it, my gosh, I mean, every time you look around, they, they're cutting the military, cutting the military, cutting the military, but they're always expecting us to be there. They're always expecting the military to take care of everything but then, hey, um, what do you want us to do? Do it with a Band-Aid. Is that basically what we're supposed to do? Just get on out there and uh, do it uh, the best you can? So you got to ask yourself, is this something that um, is just an election year ploy, or is this a thing that um, they're really considering again? Is this something to say, okay, uh, voters look at, or are they really, really, really considering this? Because I, I just look at it as every time you look around and they start doing one something, they, they do start uh, hurting us. They do make us suffer. So think about that, everyone, because if they start doing it one place, trust me, they'll be doing it in a lot of other places. And uh, do we end up being like the Romans? You know, um, if you ever look up the history of Rome and the decline of Rome, look at um, us and the way we do things here in America. Because, you know, um, we're about as powerful as Rome, and uh, things with us may change one day. Um, and if you look at every time you turn around, um, Rome became the most powerful place there was. and. That's how we are. We're about as powerful and about as big, and we do a lot of things the same way. So, you know, do you shoot, shoot yourself in the foot all the time, you know? So I'd like to say to you, um, keep it in mind and just kind of look at how things go sometimes. Anyway, you know... Um, that these are the things that we all need to look at while we're in the military, and that's some of the things that I'd like to get into and uh, always keep, um, keep you informed on. Uh, we're going to be making some changes again uh, 
to uh, keep everybody up with a lot of uh, things that are going on. Um, I've uh, got uh, some other things coming up pretty soon that you guys will be very happy to know about. And one of these days you'll see the new changes coming up. So anyway, uh, I'm going to take a break and uh, I'll be back with you in about five.
back. Uh, for those of you who uh, might want to call in and voice uh, some opinions about whatever, uh, don't forget our number is 727-597-4022. And um, if um, you'd like to um, get in touch, uh, or you can also go to my uh, Facebook page and uh, leave a comment also, or uh, get in touch with me there. Anyway, um, one of the main things that uh, I have been thinking about uh, is also um, I'm going to uh, get a uh, Twitter page going, and uh, I'll be coming out with a um, web page soon also. Um, I'm trying to get a few things going to uh, make some changes, and uh, you'll be seeing them, like I said, coming up soon. Um, we've been trying to get some of the representatives from uh, the different uh, groups to come out, and that's another something. I've uh, been at the VA, and I haven't heard back from them for a while now. And I'll be right back again because my information, uh, a lot of the things that I'm trying to do is uh, get out to a lot of the veterans about the, the benefits that they need to uh, be looking into. Uh, if you are not putting in claims, then you're not going to be taken care of. And uh, for a lot of the guys who are just getting out from the service, uh, you definitely need to be uh, checking into the VA to find out what's available to you. Uh, guys and girls, when you get out, uh, the VA is there for you. And if you're not looking into what's there, uh, you're hurting yourselves. And so many people just get out and just kind of start stumble around in the dark. Well, <laughs> that's a wrong thing to do because uh, if you're worried about uh, medical benefits or what have you, now <clears throat> it's there. And the other thing is for the married folks, please don't... Um, you know, if you get out and TRICARE is available to you, make sure that you guys get that. That's a wonderful way to go, and trust me, it's very cheap. Uh, I wouldn't go anywhere without it. Uh, I found out that uh, we love TRICARE. Um, my family has it, and uh, I think it's wonderful. Uh, a lot of places that you go, um, you know, uh, they deal with it, and uh, there's a you know, all you have to do is look up uh, the TRICARE uh, doctors, and there's a lot of them out there. And uh, there's a lot of dentists that deal with uh, TRICARE benefits. So you want to make sure that uh, you're well taken care of, because when you get out of the military, um, you want to get all the benefits that are coming to you. And some people, well, a lot of people, just get out and they wander around like in the wilderness, and they're lost. And there's no reason to be lost. Uh, we just kind of like don't want to take advantage or we uh, just say, oh, the heck with it. And that's not the way to go. Uh, that's why we're here. Uh, we try to get you to understand that there's things out there for you to do. There's benefits for you to uh, have. And no one wants to see uh, service individuals uh, prior military uh, get out and then get lost. There's too many people out there lost and you need to start finding your way and being taken care of. Uh, there are opportunities for you to do that and you guys and girls uh, are not taking advantage of it. So you need to definitely take care of that. And um, <clears throat> if I can help you uh, like I said, um, go to Facebook, or you can uh, call the station and uh, at 727-597-4022, and we will uh, assist you. Uh, just get in touch with me, and uh, whatever we can do to help you, um, we'll do. Um, and then I have an email address, uh, if that'll help you. Uh, it's uh, Albert, and that's A-L-B-E-R-T-T-T-T -T 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 at A-O-L dot com. Uh, again, it's A-L-B-E-R-T-T-T-T -T 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 
T-T-T-T at AOL.com. And uh, if you send me an email, then uh, I'll see what I can do. And then that way we'll get in touch with you, okay? Because um, it's uh, uh, to your benefit to um, check in at the VA or um, check in with someone to get uh, some kind of help. And we got a lot of veterans that are, a matter of fact, um, I spoke to a guy the other day, and uh, he's been out for a very long time, and he hasn't been getting any benefits at all. And he's had all kind of problems. He's <laughs> going to pri- private doctors because uh, he just didn't think the VA was going to do anything for him. And these were uh, some injuries that he had when he first got in, you know, when he was in, you know, and he sustained them while he was in the military. And he didn't want to um, deal with uh, the VA. And the fact that, well, the VA was for whatever, so he thought. So I told him what he needed to do. And this is going on with a lot of folks. And a lot of you guys don't seem to uh, catch on that it's for everybody. So if you got a problem and that you had something going on while you were in the military, uh, go to the VA, check it out, and let, you know, let them see you. Uh, get it taken care of. That's what they're there for. You want to get everything taken care of. Don't uh, be one of these people who just walk around for years and years and years and years, and then one day you jump up and say, I didn't know that. You know, be proactive. Take care of you, because no one's going to take care of you but you. You know, you'll be the fool who uh, don't uh, try to get everything done right away. And um, not to call you a fool, but just to let you know that, listen, anything in life, you got to take care of it. Nobody's going to take care of nothing for you but you. And if you let it happen, it's on you. In the military, they tell you, uh, listen, you got to take care of your business. This is uh, you taking care of business for you. You know, if we sit around and be uh, lackadaisical with anything that's got anything to do with us, then you know what happens? We suffer. The consequences are on our shoulders and nobody else. So you've got to get out there and make things happen. And if it's something that's going to benefit you, you got to make it happen. Because you know what? Um, if you put in a claim today that you should have put in 10 years ago, well, guess what? You're not going to receive uh, anything uh, t- starting 10 years ago. It's going to start today. So if it was something that, oh, well, gee, I could have gotten benefits or, or whatever you, uh, starting 10 years ago, no. It's going to start from the time that you start your claim. So keep that in mind also. You know, uh, even guys who um, may have had uh, all kind of problems, uh, even going way back to Vietnam, you <laughs> you got to keep that in mind. And we get out there and we do that Uh Guys just don't seem to want to make a move. So please, uh, I implore you, get out there, take care of yourself, and look into, as you're getting out of the military, that's another thing. Look at everything that's going to benefit you. Uh, See what's available. Just don't go to the classes that they give you that's going to help you uh, make the transition from military to civilian. I mean, try to start finding out, is there anything else? What else is there? Because you just kind of like, I'll take the class, that's it. Uh, I'll kind of like read what you got, that's it. Is there anything else? What else can I do? Because a lot of times, um, you know, there's something else. Try and find out, you know. Start looking into what else is there, okay? Do I need to call the VA before you get out to find out um, what uh, what can I do before uh, my discharge? You know, this is what's going on with me. What can you do for me before I get totally out? 
That's what a lot of you need to do. They're not going to tell you everything uh, as you're getting out the, the military because it, it doesn't work that way. Nobody tells you everything anyway or anything that you do. Sometimes you got to do a little homework. And um, it behooves you to do things for yourself. This is your career. This is your life. This is something for you. So, it, you know, it's a matter of what do I do for me? You know, uh, when you go to the bank, you know, uh, and you're putting your money in, a lot of times they may not tell you what they do with all your money if it benefits them. Now, uh, when it comes to you, uh, you need to know, well, what's happening with my money? You know, okay, if I put $10,000 in your bank, what do I get out of the deal? Then you need to know that. And it's the same thing when you're getting out and something is going on. What am I going to get? How do I get something? And a lot of us are not just trying to find out. We're just getting out uh, and, okay, that's it. Thank you very much. And walking out the door. Start trying to find out things. Because if you try to find out things while you were in the military about the military, then you need to try to find out something about civilian life, especially if you've been in for a while. Because there's a lot that's available if you only look up under the rocks. You know, instead of stepping on the rocks, look up under them and start saying, oh, here's something I didn't know, and it was up under that rock I just stepped on. So there are all kinds of things out there waiting for you. You just have to look for them. You have to make that little effort to see what's there other than just saying, oh, I can't find it. I don't know where it is. Somebody help me. But other than just saying it, you got to be proactive. You got to get out there and do it. So please don't just be a person who just throws up their hands and say, well, that's it. I'm walking out the door. And then once you get out there, if you're denied something, uh, you need to find out why. Because a lot of times, uh, if you get a denial on something, it's because they may have felt that you didn't have enough evidence or what have you. So please don't get discouraged and say, oh, I'm never going back. I'm never going to do this. Like, you get out there and make sure of everything that happens. Because things happen, and sometimes we get discouraged. And if we get discouraged, don't give up on whatever you do. You pursue, 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 okay? Um, it's like anything that we do, we have to always make sure that we do follow-ups. You know, in the military, uh, if we send something forward and something does not happen, then we have to find out why it didn't happen. Okay, what happened to it? Same thing in civilian life. And for those of you who uh, have been in the military, you know doggone well, we just don't send things and uh, just leave it like that. If we don't get a response, then we find out why. Uh, if we send something forward and it uh, got uh, caught up in uh, midstream and nothing uh, happened to it or it's just laying on somebody's desk, hey, listen, why isn't this being uh, processed? Why didn't an action take place, okay? There was a deadline on this, okay? Why? And then action has to be done. Same thing, you know, if you get to the VA, uh, you need things to be taken care of. But your career or your health care, your everything is dependent upon you and the things that you do, let's say, as you're getting out. Or when you get out, if you don't make it happen, it's not going to happen. Okay? You know, it's just like in the military. If it isn't written or if it wasn't written, it didn't happen. <laughs> you call up somebody and say, well, I sent you something. and uh, Or I talked to so-and-so on the phone. Well, did you send them a memo? Did you do it? Well, no, I didn't. Not really. Uh, okay, then. 
guy could tell you or a person that you spoke to, I don't know nothing about that. I don't remember that. Well, okay. It didn't happen. So remember, everyone, the things that you do are the things that you or the things that you really need to do are those things that are most important to you because it involves you and it involves your care. So if you're ever dealing with the, the VA or any facility, uh, be proactive. Go out there and make it happen. Until next time, this is Al Young, and uh, have a good week.